Welcome to Carolina Sculpture Studio. My name's Clint Button, and I'm a granite sculptor. We've got a, a small stone we just finished for a family up in Tennessee, and they uh, wanted a, a project for their mother, and uh, she was a, a big fan of irises. And so uh, uh, this is a unique project because they pretty much gave me a rough idea of something that they'd like, and short of a couple of suggestions to add a hummingbird, they just let me compose the project and, and carve it without uh, any uh, redirection. It's, um, and uh, that helped me produce a, a project that came out really well. Um, it really fits the, the niche, uh, the space really well. It really fits the media. Uh, very well because we were able to uh, um, orient the hummingbird and the foliage in a way that um, makes sense from a technical perspective. Uh, I can, uh, I literally just started with a quick, a quick simple sketch, just a, a little cartoon with, with a pen. It didn't even develop it. and. The wings really didn't make sense. This is more typical of what uh, a lot of customers will, will think of. And they'll have the beak out in the open, the wings protruding or coming straight forward towards you. And in a, um, from a technical perspective with granite, that doesn't make any sense. We can't do that. So what I did was we got this roughed in, then I moved to the clay, and just did a quick maquette, and because uh, obviously there's no uh, there's no beards on the irises here on the on the petals, but I was able to orient the bird in such a way and the foliage in such a way that everything is webbed and supported. Uh, there's very little bill showing, but with this composition, it's very clear what this is. You don't think it's a bird, uh, some other type, or a hummingbird, or a moth, or. Uh, or whatever so this allowed it to be wet very strong there's it's not a weak design and uh, and then we we're able to uh, work with the foliage create a lot of animation a lot of motion um, and to balance out the different elements so uh, um, and then after the clay was put together uh, the job was just carved now this is a I think this this is a, a basic bat that's about two inches, it's an inch and a half to two inches deep. Uh, this is only about an inch and a half deep here. Uh, but I carved it direct, I just looked at it, sketched it on the stone, and, uh, and carved it. I didn't even use a diamond saw to open this up to block it out like we do sometimes because this is so compact. This is all done with chisels. Uh, and, uh, and pneumatic hand machines. So I uh, was able to produce, did a little bit of drilling, there's some penetration. It's all open behind the hummingbird's head here all the way through, so we've got a good balance of light. The value's better here because it's brighter, because there is some light going through. It's not as black as it is like right here where it's not penetrated. Um, but uh, laid it out, carved it, got a really nice flow produce the hummingbird, uh, and uh, which it would typically bury its beak pretty deep in the middle of the iris, and uh, and it's it's just a pretty stone. Uh, for the detail on the bottom, we did a little bit of rhizome detail because if you've got irises, we've got them growing all over the place here around the studio. Uh, you're typically going to have a little hump, a little bit of the rhizome exposed, and maybe even a couple of odd round roots and then just some rough grass detail so um, uh, this will go up near uh, Knoxville Tennessee I think a little just outside of Knoxville maybe Madisonville Friendsville area and uh, it's uh, really helps to have customers work with me to develop a project that fits the medium because if this hummingbird had been oriented in a different way with wings up or wings out or, or uh, any of a number of different orientations, 
uh, it would have been difficult to make a project that looks as effortless and as flowing as this one looks. Uh, this just works really, really well. And uh, so it's, uh, and it's nice to do an iris. I, I don't know of many hand carved irises. We study a lot of floral work and you find daffodils and Easter lilies and stuff like that, but uh, um, you don't usually find irises. And uh, this one came out really, really well. So it, it'll be a special one in the portfolio and uh, that we'll have to try to top and see if we can do a better one. But um, it's a uh, pretty stone. This is a Caprice Blue, Georgia Blue Granite. It's a little bit darker than the Georgia that I normally carve, uh, just from a different quarry. So uh, carves about the same. So, uh, but uh, this is Iris with Hummingbird. And uh, this will pack up and ship out, and they'll let her up the other side, and it'll hopefully be uh, a wonderful addition and, uh, to the cemetery. It's a really nice stone. So, uh, and a lot of this is because the patrons trusted me, and they wanted me to do a great job, and they didn't micromanage the project, and that's that's a that's a big help. Um, simply because you can change things around them in ways that make, facilitate a very durable carving. So, um, well, once again, my name is Clint Button here at Carolina Sculpture Studio. Thanks for stopping by. Another big benefit of putting the duct tape on is to be able to have a center line mark. So when I sketch this on before I carve it, I've got a center line to use for reference for what I plan to carve. So, but like the man used to say, that pencil doesn't cut very good, does it? Time to start cutting stone.
Okay, I've gotten the majority of the carving wrapped up on this project. Still have to do a little bit up here at the tip of the wing. Have to reduce that to make sure that the lengths that the wings are the same size. This is long, but I want to work the niche down, the background down a little more before I have that hanging out. I want to bump it while I'm scraping. Um, I went ahead and cut the detail on the bottom. Just simulate a little bit of grass, just something nondescript, and uh, produce the rhizomes with a couple of odd roots, uh, you know, maybe a little root bound or whatever. But typically, that's a feature that you see on an iris, and so it's just nondescript. It's nice to have, but uh, cool stone. Okay, I've been working this niche back. You can see with this raking light. Pretty nice and straight from this point all the way up around. I've already tipped this edge with a chisel just to tip it because I had to cut, cut the polish and then carve almost to the cut and then tip it to the cut. To get a nice bevel without losing any dimension on my net, changing it. And over here, you can see where this is how it looked before I started, which means it's, it's only got a but it isn't, it isn't square. Over here, you can see how much I've removed to create a square transition to drop from the three sixteenths of an inch to the like quarter an inch. So I'm going to run that scotia curve. The goal with this is to have a, a definite transition from the base of the die to a square edge that's not visible if you look at it straight on. Because when you look at this and you can see this, your eye understands that this is part of the stone. When you create this open area, and then you've got carvings that are so large that they're flush with the base of the stone. I mean, if I take, this is the thickness of the duct tape to the point on the bird's head, to some of these petals, and to some of the foliage, which is the goal. That's perfect. You want to be right flush with the base. By having this definite break and then having these capture light before the whole thing is illuminated, it makes it look like it's too big to be monolithic or one part of the stone. It looks like it's a bigger sculpture or something real that's been put in there to help with that illusion and help with that demonstrate. So I'll keep carving away, push this back, and then I gotta do this. All of this is gonna help make this stone, make the, the carvings demonstrate really well. This only takes us really fast to do 